Hello, my name is Sarah Calhoun. I am the ladies representative for section two here in the Wisconsin district. And I'm also privileged to be pastor's wife at Life Spring Church in Brookfield, Wisconsin. And it's truly an honor to be a part of this new project, Hope Cafe. And I hope that you will be blessed by the content that we're making available to you through this project. Um, today, I want to bring an encouraging word from the Lord. Um, I'm going to start by reading Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verse 16. It says, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are are pleasing to God. And isn't that what we want to do? We all want to please God. If you are on a journey with the Lord at all, one of the first things we learn to do is to see what can please God. You may have heard a statement, um, this statement before. Maybe you've heard it in a sermon. Maybe you've read it somewhere in an article. Um, but truth is only one generation away from extinction. And uh, that is Frightening, but true. Uh, truth is only one generation away from extinction. So those of us who are privileged to know the truth of God's word have something very precious, but it's not just given to us to have and to hold. Remember the parable of the talents. Um, one, one of the men that received a, a talent, he received one talent. Now, there was one man who received more talents, 10 talents, one that received five and they did their, their things with the talents. You can read that parable. But I want to look at the man who received one talent. And the talent that he received was apparently very precious to him. And he, he wanted to keep it safe. And he, he wanted to guard it. So he buried it in the ground for safekeeping. Which seems like a good idea. But in the story, he was the one that was chastised for his actions. You know, truth is not given to us just to bury in our hearts and in our minds. Truth is life-giving. Truth is life-sustaining. So it must be able to produce. That's what truth is supposed to do. Psalm 145.4 says, One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. From one generation to another can mean passing down to the generation below passing up or even passing laterally, side to side. Um, I came across a theory that was very interesting to me uh, uh, several years ago and I've studied it uh, a little bit. And there was, a, there was an essay written in 1923 by a man named Carl Mannheim, The Theory of Generations. And he had an interesting thought about um, generations. He theorized that a generation isn't necessarily a group of same aged people, but it could be a group of same influenced people. Very interesting thought. Um, people as a societal group are influenced collectively by the socio-historical environment that they're exposed to especially if they're exposed to it at, at an impressionable age. Um, a historical example is uh, what sometimes we call the greatest generation. The generation that grew up in and around the era of, the, of World War II. And we, we think of them in, in kind of a clump. And now we, we don't necessarily think about the fact that there was children and teenagers and adults and elderly people during that time, but we kind of clumped them all together because the thing that they experienced made them a group together. And so it makes them, what Carl Mannheim thinks, a generation. So this social phenomenon influences that generation to have an overall sameness of thinking and creates a community of agents of change. This, in turn, gives rise to events that potentially shape future generations. So this interesting theory, there's, there's a way that we could use this spiritually. And that is, we who have come to the knowledge of God's truth are like that. We've been exposed to the same thing. We form a generation of truth. We have sameness of thinking, and we become a community 
of agents of change. We will shape future generations of truth bearers. That's what we're called to do. That's what we're supposed to do. It says from one generation to another, we're supposed to do that. As a truth bearer, we have to pass it on. We can't just let it die with our generation. So with this theory of generations being a group of people that have ex experienced the same thing, what if we thought of it as passing generation to generation, this generation, this group, this community of truth bearers, passing it to a group, a community, the world that has experienced sin, that has experienced the same things that have formed them and shaped them and, and directs their path. What if we, one generation, praise his works to another generation? What if we pass truth to the next generation? As a truth bearer, what would you pass to the next generation? I know what I would pass. I would pass scriptures like Deuteronomy 6, 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. I would love to pass that one to the next generation. How about this one? Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Or of course, we'd wanna pass this one. Acts 2.38, what did Peter say? Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What a promise, what truth. We've experienced that truth. We, want, we should want to pass that truth on to another generation? Or how about the wisdom that's in God's word? We find wisdom, the book of wisdom, Proverbs 4, starting at verse 10. My child, that could be natural or spiritual, listen to me and do as I say and you will have a long good life. I will teach you wisdom's ways and lead you in straight paths. When you walk, you won't be held back. When you run, you won't stumble. Take hold of my instructions. Don't let them go. Guard them, for they are the key to life. Don't do as the wicked do, and don't follow the path of evildoers. Don't even think about it. Don't go that way. Turn away and keep moving. For evil people can't sleep until they've done their evil deed for the day. They can't rest until they've caused someone to stumble. They eat the food of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The way of the righteous, though, is like the first gleam of dawn, which shines ever brighter until the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like total darkness. They have no idea what they are stumbling over. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Avoid perverse talk, stay away from corrupt speech, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked, keep your feet from following evil. These words of wisdom, these words of truth, these are the ones that we need to pass to another generation because it praises the works of the Lord. We have had things happen in our life. We have had our lives change. We have seen those truths play out in our lives. So this generation of truth bearer must pass it to the next generation, the generation that might be in darkness right now, but can be led into his marvelous light. It's part of the Great Commission. Matthew 28 says, make disciples of all nations. Teach those new disciples to obey all the commands I gave you. You've heard this statement, we're living in unprecedented times. And we've, hear, we've heard that again and again and again. But really, we aren't living in unprecedented times. In the book of Matthew, Jesus compared the days of Noah to the days preceding his second coming. And we are seeing end time prophecies fulfilled right before our eyes, right now in our lifetime. We are coming 
to the end times. And you know what? Truth is still truth. Sin is still sin. But God's salvation is still available to all who will. Some of what we're currently experiencing is new to us maybe, but it's certainly not new to God. He is never taken by surprise. He is never stumped. He never wonders, oh, what should I do next? I didn't think of that. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning of the end. He's the eternal Supreme Spirit. He knows all. He sees all. He understands all. So my encouraging word for you today, again, is Hebrews 13, 16. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. It may feel like a sacrifice sometime, but do it anyways. Share what you have. It's pleasing to God. Ladies of faith, pass the truth to the next generation, whether that's a generation of age or whether it's a generation of influence. And ladies that might be just now taking a hold of truth for the first time, I encourage you, buy the truth and sell it not. See what God can and will do in your life. He makes all things new and he'll make your life into something beautiful, something glorious, something pleasing. Luke 1 verse 50 says, he shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. I promise you, he is worth it for all generations. God bless you. Thank you.